so I'm just going to give this thing everything I got this morning. Um, but I just want to honor a couple of people before I get started, and um, we'll just kick this thing off. But I just want to thank you. Know, my dad's in Spain, like my mom said, and um, it's just an awesome thing whenever you can travel the world and preach the, the Word of God. That's what God called us to do anyways. And so um, for him to just let me get up here, he could ask my mom to speak. He could ask Pastor Gerald to speak. He could ask a lot of people probably. That would do a lot better job than what I would do. Um, but for him just to ask me um, his last son, the fourth child, the perfect one. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, just for him to ask me, it's just, it's a blessing. I mean, I would have never, uh, if you would have asked me whenever I was in high school, if I'd be doing this, I, I don't think I would have been. I, I mean, towards the end of my high school career, I knew what I wanted to do. So I went to Bible college, but I didn't think I wanted to do this. I mean, this is, it's a crazy thing. So I'm just honored. And my mom just, she put on an awesome women's event this past weekend. Um, I was here Friday and Saturday, and it's just tiring, so I'm glad we get off on Monday. Thanks, Mom. Uh, and so, and then just this church, this church is a blessing. Like I said, it's just changed so many people's lives, and you see people come and go every year. You see people that don't stay. You see people get plugged in, and then they get offended and mad, and if they just only knew um, that this church was just so full of love, that Jesus, God, is so full of love, um, they wouldn't, I don't think they would leave. There's other great churches. There really is, but the grass isn't greener on the other side whenever you come here. I truly believe it. I believe it doesn't get greener than this. And so, and then the other person, my beautiful wife that just led worship, she's, man, on another level. The last two nights, um, first off, she just, you know, it's been crazy things going on in 2018 where we've lost three grandparents uh, this year. And so for anyone, you know, sometimes you, you think the man's supposed to be strong and to see my wife on Wednesday after her second grandmother passed away, she's up here leading worship. And I mean, a lot of people, they don't want to do that. I mean, I didn't want to preach on Wednesday. I know she didn't want to lead worship, but I heard it was amazing. And it's just, it's just so amazing to me because it's like we try to be strong, but in our weakest moments, that's when God is the strongest and that's when God's going to uh, hold us up. And so, but the last two nights, we've just sat in the living room and I played the guitar and we just worshiped. And for like an hour each night, and she, it, let me tell you something, my wife loves me this much because she wants me to lead out in worship and sing. Um, and I don't sing, guys, I'm more of a songwriter, you know? So I wrote the song we just sang. And, uh, and for her, she's like, I want you to lead. I want you to, I want you to sing. And so, I mean, we've felt the presence of God the last two nights where we've just been exhausted. We've been tired, we've been hurting. We've been, we just wanna, you know, mourn and we just wanna cry. And, uh, but instead we just get in the presence of God and he just shows up in our house. Cause I tell you what, whenever, wherever you are, it doesn't have to be in church. It could be wherever you are. God's going to show up whenever you enter him in. And so just the last two nights, I mean, we, I, I, I stopped singing and I looked up and my wife's crying. I'm like, it's not singing that bad. And, uh, and she's just like, no, this is just awesome. And so I just, I mean, I love you, babe. You're the hottest, most sexiest, purest thing. I, I mean, I love you. Can I say that? I can say whatever I want. Um, but God is good, amen? amen? And like I said, I'm just gonna kick this thing off. And um, we've been actually, the title of my message this morning, if you need a title for your notes or anything, it is Unstoppable with Jesus. Did you know you are unstoppable with Jesus? And um, like I said, we've had three grandparents pass in the last month and we've gotten to spend some time at some hospitals. And one thing I've noticed that spending time in hospitals, you see so many people hurting. And you see so many people that are just struggling and they're mad at God. They're, they're just upset. And they're like, I got beef with God. But the problem is they don't have beef with God. They have beef with someone that portrayed God to be someone else. Because a lot of people, they're like, they're mad at God because they think their, their daughter, their son, their wife, or someone's sick, someone's about to die because of God. Can I tell you something? God does not bring sickness. A lot of people say, oh, it's just a test. It's just a challenge. God put this on me. No, because if God actually was about sickness, Everything Jesus did about healing would be going against God, and he never went against God. And, and so we got people that are in the hospital. You just see it. You talk to people. You see people, and they're just hurting, and they got beef with God. They're like, I got beef. But it's all it is is their beef with someone that misbetrayed who God really is. And for instance, well, let's take a, a husband and a wife and a man that's beating his wife. And then he says on the weekdays, I love God. I go to church on Sunday. But, I, but then in the midst, behind closed doors, he is beating his wife. And then that woman comes up and she starts growing up thinking, I'm mad at God because God let my husband beat me. But because her husband's saying, oh, I love God. 
Can I tell you, there's, there's so many stories like this. You could take a pastor that maybe has left his wife for the church secretary, which it's happened before, not here, but it's happened. And then, but then you got church members that saying, oh, I don't believe in God. Why would God do this? Why? Because they start putting their faith in someone else and they're supposed to put their faith in Jesus. But they got people, there's people all around that are misportraying who God really is. And that comes from hypocrisy. It comes, I've, I've lived a hypocrite life before. When I was in high school, man, I tell you what, I wasn't all like this. I wasn't where I was. I mean, I didn't have the tattoos and stuff, but it's funny now when you pray for people, now they're like, they get kind of taken back. They're like, man, I was praying for you. And, but we start living hip, um, hypocrite lives. And then people start seeing the way we live and they're like, you love God though? And then it makes us, that makes them look at God a whole, totally different way when God is just full of love. And so we go to these hospitals and we just see, man, I've spent so many times, it wasn't just with grandparents, it's been with kids in my youth group, it's been with kids that I don't even know, but I find out they're in the hospital, I'm like, hey, let's go. And we go talk to them and we just have family so mad at God. And that's why I wanted this message, it's just called Unstoppable with Jesus. You wanna know who God is? Look at Jesus' life, look at the gospel, because in the Bible it says Jesus was the visible image of God. So everything Jesus said and everything he did, it, was, it came from God. He didn't do anything without going to the Father. And so, um, but whenever I want to start this out, I, I had a dream a year and a half ago. In my youth, they've heard this dream a couple times, and maybe I've said it in here before. I'm not really sure, but I know it's a spiritual dream. And if you've heard it before, just keep going, because we could preach on this dream that I had, because I know it was from God. And we could, we could take a whole series, but I only got 45 minutes. Maybe three hours, you can go eat lunch and come back and I'll still be going. But anyways, I had this dream. I went to sleep one night and I was on a, I was on a train and everyone on this train, they don't even know where they're going. That, that's a lot of people these days. They don't know where they're going in life. They're just going somewhere and they're, they're trying to figure it out. And I'm asking everyone, where are we going? And nobody can tell me. And then all of a sudden, these people start walking down the aisle and they start putting people in hospital beds on each side of the train and everyone, they start injecting people and they're putting people to sleep. Why? Because the devil wants you to go through life asleep. He doesn't want you to be wide awake. Whenever we are wide awake, we can do so much for God's kingdom. But if you are asleep, you, let me tell you, when you go to sleep tonight, you can't do anything. You're just laying there. The devil wants you to be asleep in life. And so all these people are going to sleep on a train. And they, they start putting me to sleep. And I'm like, I already know. I'm like, this is wrong. This isn't supposed to be right. Well, anyways, fast forward, I won't tell you all the details because like I said, we could talk about it forever. And then we end up, we waking up and we get to this concentration camp. And as we start going in, I'm like, man, this is so wrong. We're not supposed to be here. And we're getting like, it's a check-in. And we go into this auditorium. There's all these people and we have to put on a mask. We have to be someone that we're not supposed to be. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you to be who you're supposed to be, who God has called you to be. He wants you to be someone completely different. Do you know what? The, the best you is the best you. That's all I could say. And so we start trying to be all these different people. And I'm like, man, I got to get out of here. I can't stay here. This place is not for me. So I start going out and I go through the whole front lobby and everything. And the devil's standing right there, which a lot of people think the devil is like a dude with horns and a, a pitchfork. But no, he actually, he was, a, he was a decent looking man. But I knew in my dream, I knew in my spirit, man, I was like, this guy is the devil. And all of a sudden, these other demonic people come up, which I know they're demonic, but they just look like normal people. And he's like, hey, so-and-so is trying to leave. How can we get them to stay? And this person's like, oh, well, he struggles with pornography, so let's go give him sexual pleasure and all this stuff. So then they go send him, and this guy can't leave because he gets, he's wanting to leave, but he can't. And then this other person comes up, and he's like, hey, this so-and-so is trying to leave, but I know that he likes drugs and everything. He's trying to get out of this place, but let's give him some more drugs and keep him to stay. So then they go do that. And I'm like, seeing all this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like in a dream, you know, sometimes it just feels so real. I'm like, I gotta get out of here. So I take off running, and I'm running through like barriers, and there's like shots, gunfire shooting at me, and it was like Matrix, man, in my dream. And I'm just like dodging everything. And I get out of the gate, I get out of this fence, and all I see is an open field. All I see. And also, I don't know what to do anymore, so I said, I guess I gotta turn back and go back, because there's nothing else out here. And I turn back and I go back and then I walk back to the lobby and God sees, or not God, but the devil sees me. He's like, why did you come back? And then I woke up and I never really figured it out. And I was, it bothered me for a while. And then God told me, listen, Brody, a lot of Christians, whenever they get out, which I'll say the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Because a lot of Christians, whenever they get out or a lot of people, once they find Jesus and they get out of their bondage that they've been in, all it is is open. And Jesus told me, like three weeks later, he said, if you would have just kept walking, you would have seen everything I had for you. 
But a lot of people, they don't see anything. They, don't, they want everything to come right at the very beginning. They want it all given to them. But God said, you got to walk in me for a little bit. Walk by faith. But then I still couldn't figure out. I was so mad. I'm like, well, why did I still go back? I should have walked out in faith. Because I truly believe I went back to help other people. Because that's what we have to. You know what? Faith comes by seeing and believing, right? We just got to keep on. Faith comes by um, hearing and hearing. And so faith is like an eyeball, I like to say. It sees out. It never sees in. Have you, have you ever tried to see the inside of your eyeball? Look at it right now. You can't do it because faith sees out. It doesn't see in. And one thing I want to talk about is whenever you are unstoppable, unstoppable with Jesus, there's so many times in your life where you want to reach out to people. You want to minister to people. Man, that's what my whole life is about. I want to touch as many people as I can because that's what I feel like I'm called to do. And that's what I feel like you're called to do. But sometimes we don't see the big things happening when we pray for someone or we're scared to. Well, we just got to keep believing right? This is, this is the whole key to life right here. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. You can go with me real quick. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. If you don't have a Bible, we have it up on the screens for you. Is this okay? I tell you what, if you just take a little bit of our promise, this message will change your life. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Actually, I didn't give them that one. I actually gave them Matthew 22, 37. It's the same verse. But it, it says that we can put this one up there. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Luke actually 10, 27, it says with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. That's the first key. If you want to reach people, if you want to be unstoppable with Jesus, the first thing you have to do is you have to love God with all of your mind, all your soul, and all your heart. And at the, in Luke, it says strength. Do you know why I think they put strength at the very end? Because a lot of the times we want to just be strong for God and that's it. See, your mind, your heart, and your soul, it's there but your strength is always gonna come and go. And in our weakest moments, that's when God is actually at his strongest. So that's why I totally think they put that in there kind of towards the end because we wanna we want to say, you know what? I'm the rock for my family. I'm gonna be strong for my family. I'm gonna be strong for God. But no, you ain't the rock. Jesus is the rock. And then it goes on and it says, love your neighbor as yourself. This is the best part. This is my favorite part. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know what? We can't love our neighbor until we learn to love ourselves. End of story. And we can't love ourselves until we learn that Jesus actually loves us and who we are in Christ. See, I, I tell my youth this all the time. Only in the real Jesus will you find the real you. And when people see the real you, they'll see the real Jesus. See, I just want you to be you. I can't be my dad. I would love to get up here and speak like Pastor Bracken and teach like him because he's awesome, but I just can't do that. We're completely two different people. I'm going to be the best me. And I love it. People, people have said this all the time. I went to school with a guy. He's like, look in my eyes. Can you see Jesus? Can you see him? Look in my eyes. And at first it's like, what? But no, it's because he knew who he really was. Because when you know that Jesus loves you, you know who you are. And then you can start loving other people. But you can't do that if you don't know who he is and who you are. It's completely different. So if you need to be better in your life, you need to look to Jesus. If you need an answer in your life, you need to look to Jesus. If you need to know who to date in your life, you need to go to the word of God and look to Jesus. Jesus is the complete answer. Just be the best you. God's not looking for perf perfection. He's looking for someone just to be available and say, God, here I am. Use me. I'm going to give you a couple stories from my life because my life has been completely crazy since I fell in love with Jesus. I've been in love with Jesus, but there's a difference between being just loving God and there's a difference between being so in love with Jesus. And I'm going to tell you some stories about my life. And it does, it's not just saying, oh, wow, look at me. This is what I've done. No, it's all about, hey, look to see what Jesus has done. Because I'm just a nobody. I'm a short white dude trying to grow my hair out so I can get dreads with tattoos. And like, I do not look cool or anything. I'm just, I'm a nobody. But I have some crazy, awesome testimonies because I say, God, just use me. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying it to say, hey, I'm just so cool. Look at my stories because you can have the same stories that I have. Amen. But I, I, I told it a couple weeks ago, there was this boy and I heard about him in the hospital. He doesn't even come to my youth group. And I heard about him. I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to go pray for this guy. Me and Matt, we went up to this guy and it's just a young 16-year-old kid that got in an accident. He couldn't even move. He, he just could give us a thumbs up. Couldn't talk anything. 
and we start praying for him. It was funny is because the people that were there at the, at the hospital, because he doesn't even have parents. He, he, he just been bouncing around. He lived in a, um, a park for a while, got super sick. Someone picked him up and then he just, he's finally has a home, but he doesn't even have, know his last name or anything like that. And so the people that are so-called his family, they're not really pl- praying out loud for him. So me and Matt walk in there and we're like, let's do this. We lay our hands on him. We start praying and we're talking to God and everything. And a lot of people are kind of taken back because we don't care. Man, I, I could care less what people think about me. This thing's real to me. I mean, I'm probably an embarrassment on places I go, but I don't care. God's so real. And so we just start praying for this boy. Well, kind of three weeks later, I go back and he's up and he's playing PlayStation now. And he's playing Xbox, I mean, and he, I walk in his, his uh, mom, I guess you could call her. She says, hey, will you come spend a couple hours with Javon? I'm like, yeah, I would love to actually. So I go up there and he's playing games and I'm just watching it for a little bit. But my first word is I was like, hey, Javon, do you know Jesus? Because I don't have time to waste. I can't waste any more time in my life. People need to know who Jesus is because people are dying each and every day without, and they're going to hell because hell's real. In the Bible, it talks about gnashing of teeth and being on fire. I think about people 50 years ago when I'm like, man, for the last 50 years, people are perishing in a place that I don't want anyone to go because it's a real place. And so I'm like, Javon, you know Jesus? And he goes, man, this whole thing, you know, it's kind of changed my life a little bit. I never really believed in God. And I said, let's pray, pray right now. And so he, he ended up accepting God to come into his heart. His life changed completely. He said, I don't know how to do it. So we just prayed right then. Why? Because I don't have time to waste. It's all about love, love in your neighbor. We didn't have to, I didn't have to say, oh, well, you have to come to my church and tithe first. You have to come and you got to lift your hands and worship for a couple weeks before you can get saved. No, it's just right on the spot. And I said, hey man, let's do this right here. And now he's out. They said he wouldn't even make it. He wasn't even going to be alive. And now he's out and he's walking around. All he is in his arm sling and stuff all because of the love of God. People just need to know what you have. People are looking for answers. But then there was, there was another guy, me, me and one of my best friends, Dakota Mitchell, we were at my brother's gym. It was like two years ago. And there's this guy, he's just working out. And, and I've never met him before. I've never seen him. And I'm like, hey, you know, what's up? My name's Brody, my brother owns the gym. And I just start talking to him. And he comes to find out he was in the military. He's an older guy and he, he has rods in his back and everything. And so I just start talking to him. I'm like, yeah, I'm the youth pastor over here, blah, blah. We get to know him and we turn around and I'm like, Code, I feel like we need to pray for this guy. And so he's like, let's do it. So I turn around, I'm say, I said, sir, do you know Jesus? He's like, yeah, I believe in God. I said, well, there's a lot of gods, but there's only one Jesus. And I said, we just wanna pray for you. Is that okay? Like right in the middle of my brother's gym, people are like walking around. They might think we're crazy. We just lay our hands on him and start praying for him in the middle of the gym. God just showed this, this guy, he's like a big dude. He's just crying in the middle of my brother's gym. And we're just telling him, hey man, we love you. We didn't have to, we didn't get him saved. Why a lot of people are like, why didn't you get this guy saved? Or there's a lot of times I've ministered to people and I don't, we don't pray the prayer of salvation. People are like, why not? Because God didn't tell us, God brings the increase. We're the ones to sow and we're the ones to water, but God brings the increase. So a lot of times people just need love. They don't need to hear right now. Oh, I'm gonna put you in a headlock. You better pray this prayer. That's what we wanna do to a lot of people, but we can't do that. We're called to love. And man, this guy, I don't, I don't know. I've never seen him ever since. I don't even know if it was, I don't know who this guy was. He, I saw him one time, never seen him ever since the last two years. I don't know if God changed his life. I don't know what happened. Maybe he found Jesus and went somewhere to be a pastor. I don't know. That's not my job. I was, my, my job is just to sow into water. But what you see is not what you get. A lot of people say, what you see is what you get. This is who I am. Have you ever heard people say that? This is who I am. What you see is what you get. No, we, we did a message in my youth. It's what you see is not what you get. Because why? Because I see a lot of hurting people in this world. I see a lot of them. But the thing is, they don't want to stay hurting. They're looking for an answer. They're looking for a hope. And guess what? We have that. The answer is Jesus. And we can give it to them. If you had the answer to all things, why would you hide it in the closet? Why would you lock it up and not share it? We have the answer to all things and his name is Jesus so we can share it to whoever. Amen. Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom. He said, wow, here's the keys. Go wreck hell now. If I gave you keys to a Lamborghini and I said, it's waiting right outside for you. Once you leave church, it's in the parking lot. What are you gonna do? You ain't gonna go grab those keys, start your car and go park it in your garage. No, I'm hitting Marshall Sharp Freeway going at least 200 miles an hour. Jesus said, here's the keys to everlasting life, to the kingdom. 
Now go use them. And some of us take those keys and we get saved and we just go hang them up on our shelf. People need this. People need to know that they're loved. People need to know that there's a God that saved them, that they don't have to live in bondage. This is good news. John 13, 35, go there real quick. It says this. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you and you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Your love for one another will prove that you are God's disciples. Man, I see so much hate in the world. I hang out with junior high and high school kids. Man, they have no filter. I, I hate you whenever they just take the remote on the game cast back there. I'm like, why are you hating? We are called to love everyone. Not just our mom that makes us pee pee and Jay sandwiches, but we are called to love everyone. And whenever you, if you are God's disciple, you will love everyone. Now go with me real quick to chapter 15, verse nine. It's up on the screen if you, if you have it. Verse nine, it says this, I have loved you even as a father had loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey me, you will remain in my love just as I obey my father and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with the joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I command you to love each other in the same way that I have loved you. Man, God loves us. For any person to ever give their son to die on a cross for our sins so we can have everlasting life, we are supposed to love the same exact way. And all people need is love. They're looking for an answer and it's just someone to tell them that Jesus loves them. I was at Freddy's. I was selling some speakers. Some of y'all have heard this story. I was selling some speakers to the guy. I pull up in my car and he's like tattooed from the head down. And I don't get me wrong, I love tattoos, but I never tattooed my, my top of my head because that would just hurt. And you should do it, Bracken, because you're bald. <laughs> um, anyways, this guy, was, and, and a lot of people, I, I'll get to it later, but a lot of, I've, I've ministered to this guy and a lot of people never ministered to the guy. He was in prison and everything, but a lot of people never ministered because they're scared of him. We can't be scared of people by the way they look or by the way they talk because this message is for everyone. And I'm selling him some speakers and he looked at me, he goes, are you a pastor? And I said, how'd you know? He just said, man, I just had a feeling you were a pastor. I mean, I was wearing some gym shorts and a t-shirt. There's no way I looked like a pastor. And I started talking to him, I'm like, yeah. I said, you should come to our church sometime. And he pulls out his um, wallet to give me money to pay for the speakers. And there's just hundreds just lined up. And he said, man, I got all this money because I sell drugs. I sell every kind of drug. He's like, I got out of prison. This is all I know how to do. First thing I did was I grabbed that money. I took off running. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I said, man, you don't have to do live like this anymore. I said, do you know what? Jesus loves you. He never even heard that before. He never even heard. This is a grown man that's been in prison, lived in and out. All he needed to hear was Jesus loved him. I said, can I pray for you? He told me a story that he was in prison and his wife and his daughter or his ex-wife and his daughter live in Houston. I said, you need to go back to Houston. You need to qu quit living like this. But first you need to come to our church, check it out. And I never saw him again, but I prayed for him. I mean, we're in Freddy's parking lot. My hands are laid on this dude's head and people are walking in and out of Freddy's. Freddy's giving us some weird looks. I've been rebuked by a lot of people. Let me tell you something. One time I went to uh, the Salvation Army when I was in high school and I'm playing my guitar singing and this lady that's working there told me I was gonna burn in hell. I've been rebuked so many times by people. I'm like, how am I gonna burn in hell? I'm like, do you know what, you need Jesus. Let me pray for you. And she wouldn't let me pray for you. She was just mad at me. She's telling me to leave. I'm gonna call the cops. It was just me and one of my friends playing guitar singing. I've ever been rebuked by a lot of people and I don't care. This, this is the life I choose because a lot of people are dying and they're hurting and they just need to hear the love of Jesus. And so I'm laying my hands on this dude and I'm just praying for him. And people are walking into Freddy's and they're just like looking at us. And I'm like looking out of the corner of my eye like, yeah, I know you see this because you need this too. <laughs> and he's just bawling like this is a, this dude is hard, man. He's been through a lot and he's just crying in Freddy's parking lot, snot coming down his nose. I left there and I'm just thinking, man, God, this is awesome. Keep using me. I pray every day that he uses me and I pray every day that he also uses you because there's so many people that you pass every day that just needs to hear, hey, Jesus loves you. Where, where it completely all changed for me. I, I was in Bible college and we would go once a month when I could when I wasn't playing basketball or having games on the weekend. And we go to downtown Tulsa at a bus stop. 
and we would just start, we'd just pray for people. And I, and I got to the point where I, I started seeing this. I started seeing a cycle in this, this one guy that I would go with. He, he kept trying to get people like filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's great. That, that's completely fine. But people weren't ready for that. They weren't even saved yet. He was like, man, I want you to get the Holy Spirit. And so I started seeing this. And this is where my whole life completely changed. Where I said, this is where I'm going to be full on. Let's do this. Because there were so many... Th- there's like, it's downtown and there's a club right beside there and there's a bus stop. And so people are getting ready to go to the club and they're all dancing. They're like walking up and they're just seeing us lay hands on people, praying for people, loving on people. And it's crazy. And I remember they told me, don't take money out there because you'll just start giving. There's all these people that are just struggle up on coke and heroin and like just drug addicts, hardcore people. They're just at a bus stop trying to get to the next location because they don't know where they're going in life. It's almost like my dream. They're on a stop and they don't know where they're going. They're on their way to eternal death in hell and they don't know that. And so they say, bro, you don't take your money out there because you'll start giving it away and then they're gonna use it for drugs. But it's not my job to judge what they're gonna do it with. My job is just to love them. And so I, I gathered up all my money I had. I said, don't tell me what to do with my money. It's my mom's money and my dad's money anyways. They're helping me go to school, so it's not my money anyways. And so I go out to this place and I'm here and I just got a line that like wraps all the way around the corner because I, I trick people, that's what I do. I'm not trying to trick you in this word because it's all truth. Everything I say, if you don't believe me, just go to the word. It tells you. But I trick people sometimes, and that's okay because I don't think God's mad at me. But I tell them, I say, listen, I'll give you money. I'm telling you, these people, this one guy was so happy that he got 50 cents one time because he's just looking to get some more drugs. And I said, you know what, I'll pray for you, and then I'll give you money. But if you don't let me pray for you, you don't get no money. I had a line just wrapped around this corner. Pray for someone. Tell them Jesus loves them. Next person, hey pray for you. Here's 20 bucks. Just go. I start doing that. I saw so many people. I don't know what they did with their money, but I saw so many lives changed just because I was one person saying, you know what? I'm going to do everything I can to get someone to know that Jesus loves them. And a lot of people that I would go with, they quit going with me because they didn't like the fact that I'm giving drug addicts money. I ain't giving them drugs. I'm not a drug dealer. I'm a hope dealer. I'm dealing hope to people, saying, hey, there's a better way. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to get on this bus and go somewhere that you don't know where you're going. I'll tell you where you're going to go. Whenever you die, you're going to go to heaven. But this is the way. His name is Jesus. So I started dealing hope to people. And that's what you're called to do. You're called to deal hope to people. See, God didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. That's all it is. Because there's a lot of bad people, but there's more dead people. And he's, he came so that people could have life. We can't be scared of going out and going out of our way just to talk to people and tell people, hey, Jesus loves you. Because some people are like, well, what if nothing happens? That's the best part. What if nothing happens? If nothing happens, nothing happens. You're still at ground zero. That's the best thing. But what if you pray for someone and their life changes or they find Jesus? Or they quit going this way. That's the best thing that could happen. People are like, my kids ask me all the time. They're like, I want to be like you, Brody. It's so easy. Do you know how you do it? It's the easiest thing. You tell people, hey, Jesus really loves you. It automatically opens up their eyes. And they say, a lot of people say, how do you know? Or no, he doesn't. And you say, let me show you. And you pray for him. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the best evangelist that there is. Because a lot of people, they're like, I don't want to do it because I don't know what to say. It's so easy. Jesus loves you. Can I pray for you? And then once you pray for him, the Holy Spirit starts giving you stuff. But all you have to do is take the first step. Nothing's ever going to happen if you just stay right where you are at. You got to take steps towards people. Because if I'm in him and he's in me, then you can't fail. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God is for me, then nobody can be against me. Amen? The very same power that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of me in you. That very same power. So you can't fail. It is physically impossible to fail whenever you are sharing the love of God. There will be people that don't want to hear it. Yes, that's fine, but you cannot fail. There are so many people that are in this world that haven't heard this good news. I see it every day. There was a guy I went to school with. He's 20 years old. He finally went to Bible college because for 19 years of his life, no one ever told him about Jesus. At 15, he was shrug up on drugs. He was drinking alcohol and liquor, like full bottles of liquor at 15. 
And he thought, hey, the only reason why my parents love me is because they have to. And he was, he was at like one of those cities where there's like a church every like two miles, kind of like Lubbock. There's a church everywhere. And not one person told him for 19 years, hey, Jesus loves you. His parents didn't go to church or anything. And then finally, one person out of 19 years told this man, hey, Jesus loves you. Let me pray for you. He felt everything, lost everything. Was like, I'm gonna go to Bible college. And now he's traveling the world, preaching the gospel. One of my good friends and I'm just like, all because one person stepped out. For 19 years, nobody did anything. I don't wanna be one of those people that for 19 years, we just let people sit and we've let people stand. No, they need to hear something. We have one goal and that is to reach people. The Bible tells us go into all the world and preach the gospel. You don't have to go into all the world. You just need to go into your workplace. You just need to go into your school. That's all it is. See, we got, we got a lot of us, we just battle with churches. Our churches actually just need to come together. This church does this. Oh, we don't really like that. Oh, why do you go to that church? No, we just need to get all the churches together and say, hey, we have one goal. Let's just reach people. Why are we battling on whose lights are cooler? Whose music's better? One goal, and that is to reach people. We can't give up on people because Jesus never gave up on anybody. Never, not one time. He never went to someone and saw someone sick and said, oh, you know what, come back to me in a couple weeks whenever you're a little better, whenever you've actually prayed a little longer. No, he healed everybody. He never turned anybody away. Tomorrow's not promised. No, it's not. I tell my wife that all the time. She's like, hey, can we go so-and-so tomorrow? I said, tomorrow's not promised. I don't know. <laughs> Tomorrow is not promised. But right now, you are unstoppable with Jesus. Someone once asked me, one of my good friends in high school, he said, Brody, what if this thing isn't real? And I didn't want to believe it. I said, no, no, it is real. It's real. He said, no, 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 follow along with me. What if it's not? So I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on that route. If it's not real, okay, if it's not real, then I, I use my whole life to do this thing called love and follow Jesus. And if it's not real, nothing happens. We just go back to dirt, go back to dust. Nothing happens. But if it is real, now you take my side, if it is real and we don't do anything, then we lose everything if it's real. So the only thing to do is say, do you know what? I'm going to follow this. Because if we don't, we lose everything. So when I try to tell people, I say, listen, do you wanna lose everything or do you wanna gain everything? You have to. You have nothing to be scared of when you know you're never gonna die. I know I'm never gonna die. So I have nothing to be scared of. I, I, I was trying to talk to this one guy one time and he was so mad at me. I said, you wanna punch me in the face? Do it if that makes you feel better because I'm never gonna die. He looked at me like I was crazy. Why? Because when we die, all we do is we lose this tent that we're in right here. It, look, I'll show you in Matthew 10, verse 39. We have it up on the screen. Matthew 10, verse 39. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. If you give your life to him, you'll find it. So burn like a fire now. Don't wait. We should be burning with the passion to reach other people. People are like, oh, well, he's dry wood. I can't reach him. Dry wood, water wood. Elijah didn't care what kind of wood it was. It's all going to burn. So burn like a fire now. What you do now and how you burn will affect people around you for the rest of their life. For the rest of their life, the people that you are encounter now, it will affect them. You wanna know how I have a text message? I wanna show you. This is one of my college roommate, one of my college roommates. Let me find it. He texted me the other day. I haven't talked to him in five years since we graduated. He said this, Hey man, I wanted to reach out to you because you have been on my heart lately. Just the man you were. And me and Alex were talking the other day about who was my favorite player to play with at Rayma, And it was surely you because of your heart that you had. And you still have an amazing heart and strength that is so rare in an amazing way. And you have such great leadership qualities. In my opinion, you were the best leader I ever had the opportunity to play with. I know we're way beyond basketball now. Laugh out loud. Ha ha ha. I just want to let you know your heart and your worth ethic is still a lasting impact in my life. All because I was in college and I said, I'm going to live this thing out. My roommate is still thinking about how I live then. Why? Because the people that are around you now, if you want to live like a hypocrite, they're going to see that this God and they're going to be like, no, I don't want to follow that God. 
But when you say, hey, this is how I'm really going to live, a God that loves me, I'm going to show people who Jesus really is, you will have a lasting impact on their life forever. I, I, I told this to Mitchell last week. It was great for Easter. I said, when you wear a cross, it doesn't change anything. But when you wear a resurrection, it changes everything. See, you can wear a cross. I got a tattoo of a cross on the back of my arm. A lot of people wear necklaces of cross. They can wear a cross. It doesn't change anything, but whenever you wear a resurrection, you say, hey, Jesus died for me and he rose again. What can I do for other people? When you start telling people this message, see a lot of people just leave them on the cross and they leave them right there. But the Jesus that I serve, he died and he rose again. Why? So that you could have life. This is good stuff. Is this okay? We're about to close, I promise. I've already went 30 minutes and it's 11.45, but I just, let me get a couple things out. I think of the story of the man, the thief on a cross in Luke chapter 23. And as I think about this man, we can read it. It says, one of the criminals hanging beside him scoffled, so you are the Messiah, are you? Prove it and, be sa and save yourself and us too while you're at it. And then he says, but the other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says this, I assure you today, you will be with me in paradise. So this man's hanging on a cross and this other guy, he's saying, why don't you get us down from here if you're really the Messiah? And this man cries out, he didn't do anything to be here. We have, these men were criminals. These men were thieves. They deserve to be there, they said. He said, we deserve this. And he said, Jesus, remember me whenever you go to your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. That's love right there. He didn't have to give him a 10 point sermon. He didn't have to say, come and tithe at my church. He didn't say, you didn't live right, so now you have to go to hell. What I don't want people to do is wait to the last minute of their life. Because that's the hardest part. A lot of people, I'm, I'm all about it. If someone's on their last stretch, I'm here to tell them. But I want to get people before they're on their last stretch so they can experience the presence of God and live the life that God has called them to live. Where it says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but God came to give you life and life abundant. I want people to live the abundant life. I don't want them to live a rough life and then they get to the last part and then they call on Jesus. If they do get to the point, Jesus is still going to save them because he's so full of love. Thank God I'm not God because I would have been like, oh, well, you did this two weeks ago. Sorry. <laughs> so full of love. Some of you are like, I didn't sign up for this, Brody. I didn't sign up to be like this. Yeah, you did. Whenever you accepted Jesus in your heart, you signed up to go out and witness to other people. You say, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. You are. Can I, can I show you something? I have my wallet right here. This is a $100 bill. It's worth $100. Nothing more, nothing less. If I crumble this up, it is still worth $100. If I, if I put it on the ground and I stomp on it, it is still worth $100. Because why? Because it is stamped by the government. Can I tell you something? You're worth a whole lot more than just $100. Though if, if I decide to rip it up right here on the corner, it is still worth $100. Your life is priceless. Jesus paid a price for you because you are, you're worth so much more than this. And why? Because you have been stamped by the everlasting God. So you can't say, I'm not worth anything. You're worth so much. Enough for a God to send his only son to die on a cross for you so that you can have everlasting life and you can share the good news. There you go. But you're a twin, so you got to split with your brother because you have to split everything. No, that's your choice. And make sure you tithe on Wednesday night. 10%, $10, better see it. You're worth so much. It doesn't matter where that $100 has been. It doesn't matter whose hands it went through. It doesn't even matter what it was used for in the past. Man, you might have been crushed. You might have been stepped on. You might have been used. You might have been just tortured. You might have been lived a life that was used for things that it shouldn't have been used for. But you're still worth so much. See, the best sermons, they aren't on Sunday. 
They're on Monday whenever you go into work. They're on Tuesday when you go into the school. That's when the best sermons are. So how about we stop caring what people are gonna think and how they look at us? Why don't we stop and we just shine for God? See, our mission statement isn't to get a basket over our head or hide into a closet and not share anything. Our mission statement is to go to every living creature and tell them the word of God. Preach this message. It's simple. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And if we know who God really is, that's who we can show the God, which is a real God, a faithful God, a God that loves people, a God that cares about people, a God that is for people and not against them, a God that will move mountains just to get to you. And we know that God, so we can show people that God, but hypocrisy has to stop. We've been living our lives, some of, some of you have been living your life and you're living like a hypocrite and you're showing people the wrong God. It stops now. We gotta show people the right God. And, and I'm closing right here. There was this man, he had a dream. He was an atheist. He had a dream and he was standing on a fence and all these people to the right, it was Jesus and all these people. And then he saw the devil and all these people and he was standing on a fence. And all of a sudden, all the people in Jesus vanished. And then all the people in the devil vanished. And he's just standing on a fence alone. And the devil comes back and he says, hey, aren't you coming? And he said, I didn't choose Jesus and I sure didn't choose you. And he said, the fence is mine. Man, God says, you're either hot or you're cold. You're in or you're out. You're either for me or you're against me. There's no fence anymore because the fence is the devil's. So this is either real or it's not. And you have to make that decision. We're the ones that hold ourselves back. It's us, it's no one else. It's our own selfishness or our own insecurities or us being scared saying, what if, what if they rebuke me? What if, they're, what if they say this? What if they don't, nothing changes? It's not about that. I'm so glad my God didn't say, well, what if? Hypocrisy has to stop and we can't live on a fence anymore. This thing's real and people are dying every day just to hear the love of God. And it's so good. With every head bowed, every eye closed, God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for everyone in this room, God. I thank you just for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. And if there's anyone in here that needs to know you better, that has never accepted you to be their Lord and Savior, or has been on the fence and just been struggling and been living a hypocrite lifestyle, I pray that that will get right with you right now. And on the count of three, I want you just to lift your hands if that's you. Because there's a God that loves you. There's a God that died on the cross for you that just wants to get closer to you. So if that's you on the count of three, one, Jesus died for you and he loves you. Two, right now is the time for salvation. Three, lift your hand if that's you. Hands going up. So real. Listen, if that's you, I just want you to get out of your seat. I'm not gonna do anything crazy, but I want you to get out of your seat and I want you just to come up front because we have a place of prayer because this thing, so I, I could have you just pray a prayer at your seat, but it's not good enough right now. So if that's you, you can look up to me. And if, if you raised your hand, should have raised your hand, wanted to raise your hand, felt like you could have raised your hand, I want you to come up to the front right now. Don't be shy, don't be scared because this is a big decision. I saw hands go up, so don't, I mean, I'll put you out. No? Okay. I'm not going to point you out. But just know this, that Jesus said, if you deny me before God, I'll deny you before my Father. If you deny me before man, I'll deny you before my Father. It's deep stuff. This, this thing's real, guys. I just want you to know, just love. Whenever you leave here, find someone to love. Find someone to care for. Whether it's an encouraging word or a hug or saying Jesus loves you. Don't be scared to pray for people anywhere that you go. Man, me and my wife, we're, everywhere we go, I'm like, hey, we should pray for someone today. Because we should. I live for this, man. I just want you to know that I love you, though. And I wouldn't be here if I didn't. 
I wanna be giving, pouring my heart out to you, just saying, reach people if I didn't believe in this message. So I'm just gonna pray for you and then we're gonna go. And then after I pray, um, if you just let me get to the back, I just wanna shake hands and hug people and just tell you thanks for coming. So we're just gonna pray. We're gonna end this right here. God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for Harvest Church. I thank you for the lives that are in this building, God. I thank you just for touching each and every soul in here, Lord, and showing them who you really are. That's a good God, a God that's love them and a God that is for them. I just thank you that as we leave here today, Lord, that we will be forever changed and that we will reach as many people as we can. We won't be scared because the worst that could happen is absolutely nothing. But the best that could happen is someone actually finding you and seeing you, Jesus, and encountering you. So we just thank you and praise you for this amazing service and who you are, God. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen.